Welcome to the AI battle. Thank this you. is the second time we met, and then this time we're going to discuss about election. It was two days, uh, one day before the election. We were sitting here in Yangon office, and, uh, and then we don't know, we cannot predict the outcome of the election yet, not yet. But if you see, if you feel the people on the ground, I'm pretty sure that uh, the opposition party and then some ethnic parties will do quite well in the in 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 election. The, my first question will be about how the election is going to be credible and uh, free and fair. Because the president himself promised to hold free and fair election, and uh, opposition, including Don San Suu Kyi, for the first time, uh, take part in uh, this historic election. So can you share your feeling and your thought on how it's going to be credible, clean, and free and fair? Well, I think it would be very difficult for authorities to manipulate the election or to do something really dirty because there's so many foreign ob election observers here and uh, 600 journalists have descended upon Yangon right. to cover their right. election. So what we're probably going to see tomorrow is a free and fair election. The most, but then on the other hand, we have to wait and see what will happen after the election, let's say a month or two from now, because that is when things are going to become you know, very interesting. And also there were fear. There were quite a sinister or, or no, some thought on the possible violence uh, before the election. But we were sitting here in Yangon and walking around quite peacefully and we don't see any signs of violence uh, uh, and, or even a climate of fear. Yes. I mean, even though people are very skeptical, people are afraid of something would happen. But if nothing is going to happen today, I mean, in case of violence, I think, I assume, the election will be quite peaceful. I think we can expect it to be very peaceful, actually. And what is historic, really, about this election is not so much the way people are going to vote, we don't, we don't know yet. Right. But what is historic, really, is the, the mobilization of people here, right. the interest people are showing in the election, right. the way the people are expressing their political ideas for the first time, openly without fear, right. in decades. Yes. And that is historic. Yes. So the people participation, their determination to take part in the election, going to vote. And also what is interesting was in 1990s, you also covered the election at the time from Thailand. And uh, it, was un it was held under the very repressive regime. But it was violence free yes. as well as quite free and fair. It was very free and fair. I mean, yeah. the election was free and fair. It was just that the outcome wasn't you know, honored by, never the, been, by the never government. Honor. No, it was never honored. Yes. But the election day it was peaceful, free and fair. And remember these jubilant celebrations at the end of the day, the people were driving around Rangoon in trucks that's celebrating right. the end of the that's victory. Right. That's right. And if you go back to 1990, I remember also very well that people were afraid that there would be some frauds and some cheating going on at that time. So they, when they had fill in and make their, their marks on the on the ballot paper, they would hold it up to the election <laughs> one and say, "Is this a valid vote? Are you sure?" And then they would put it down in the box. I mean, the, even at that time, people were not afraid. They they went out and and they voted and they voted according to the conscience. And there was no tampering with the voting registers or anything like that. It was probably even easier in those days because everything was done manually, not with computers now. And computers can be quite unreliable. That's right. So whatever glitches we may see tomorrow will be computer errors rather than somebody trying to you know, tamper with, with the outcome of the voting. Well, I heard about the software problems and then uh, there's a Western institution who are providing assistance and help. Uh, there were some uh, unintended uh, uh, consequences and problems in terms of the voter list. I think we want to move on to the, uh, the battle for legitimacy. It seems to me that this election is more like a referendum. People would like to choose the, between the military dictator and the extension of that dictatorship to the, the civilian government to the opposition, particularly NLD and Dong San Suu Kyi. It's more like a referendum. Well, the election in 1990 was also a referendum. At that time, they were like, like 
like now, about 90 to 100 p parties participated in the election. Right. But there were only two parties that really mattered. At that time, there was the NUP and the NLD. This time, the USDP and the NLD. And then, as well as now, uh, the government favored party, or the, the party that the military right. favored, stood for the old order and a continu you know, continuity and continuation of uh, the, the old system. Whereas N NLD symbolized people's desire for change. They it didn't matter who the candidate was. People voted for the NLD anyway. They, as, as I said, it's a joke at that time. The NLD could have fielded as a horse as a candidate. People would have voted for, for that horse because they voted for change. There was yes or no to the, pres to the system at that time. That's, and that has not changed. That's it's, very it's, interesting. Uh, also, I really appreciate when you mentioned the people's desire because Burmese people have been living with it, this slogan, people's desire. So, that, <laughs> so I think that the real, the real people's desire, genuine desire will, will be shown, uh, hopefully. We will see the people's desire uh, tomorrow. And, but the question is, uh, observer were saying that NLD will do well in an election. Will there be transfer of power? That's a big question. Yes. And we also have to remember that the military still controls 25%, a quarter of all the right. seats in the upper house and the lower house. And then if you see the, how the, the seats are divided between the regions and the states, mm -hmm. that even if the NLD cap captures all the seats in the regions, they will still be short of a parliamentary majority in the upper house and the lower house. So the NLD cannot win unless they get the support of local regional parties in the states. And everyone is expecting, it's very, very difficult to predict the outcome of any election. But I think it's fair, fair to say, and fair to assume that regional parties are going to do very well in the, in the various ethnic states. Right. And without their support, NAD cannot get a majority. So, but uh, the baseline uh, among the diplomats and a uh, uh, Burma observer, uh, they were saying that the baseline is majority of NLD MPs and new faces will be sitting in the parliament. That is absolutely true, but will they be able to run the country after that? That's the big question. I mean, I saw right. the front page of a Thai newspaper on my flight to, from Bangkok to Yangon yesterday. There was the nation, and they said that Aung San Suu Kyi is uh, ready to run the government after the election. Yes, she may be able to run the government, but will she be able to run the country? We have to remember that the military is still the most important, the most powerful institution here. But she has to talk to the military. And yes. They have prepared very well in, since they take up the 25% in the parliament. Uh, this gradual process has been well thought out, uh, uh, seems to me, uh, because they don't need to stage a coup again. No. There wouldn't be a coup, but I mean, uh, still the constitution gives the president the power to hand over power executive power to the military if there is a national crisis. So they don't have to say she could, it's not necessary. But I don't think it would really come to that. No, but also I think uh, if you look at it, they cleverly uh, drafted this um, new uh, constitution, which is they have uh, the uh, powerful ministries yes. in their hands, yes. uh, defense ministries, home affairs ministries, and the border affairs ministries, including GAD, General Administration Department. Yes. So they have absolute power. And so even if NLD uh, don't sense she can form a government, there is a doubt about what they can control. Absolutely. I mean, that's what I'm saying, that they, they can maybe run the, the government, but they can't run the country. Because the, country, you know, the most, three most important ministries and 25% uh, <clears throat> of all the seats in the parliament, and you need more than 75% to change the constitution, gives the military a very privileged, powerful position. That is not going to change after this election. If you look at the President Wu Tain speech and a remark about election, it has been very consistent. Uh, do you think if NLD party wins, he, is he going to hand over power in spite of initial fear and the doubt and the suspicious about the government and his intention? One possibility, if the NLD does extremely well, which everybody's expecting, is yes, okay, hand over the power to the NLD for a couple of months, maybe half a year. But what can the NLD do, even if they are in power? Expectations are going to be very high. And if they can't deliver on the promises and those expectations, support for the NLD will dwindle. And uh, since the military controls the most important ministries, they have a, 
veto power over any attempt to change the constitution. There's very little NLD can actually do. And I would be very surprised if they were able to live up to the very high expectations that people have today. But people don't trust the government. Well, it's it. They uh, deeply uh, don't uh, trust yes, the government. Yes. It, Even it's, government it's, may have a good intention. Yeah. You know, but people don't trust. I find that people on the ground don't trust the government. No, they don't. You can talk to anyone and they will say that we don't trust this government. They think they're up to something, you know, something evil. Because some evil but when you plan. say what is evil, <coughs> what are they going to do? No one can give you a clear answer. No, they just think that they want to cling on to power and, uh, you know, yeah. ignore the, what people's desire, what people's genuine desire. So people, people, kept, people on the streets kept telling us that, uh, kept telling me that, Oh, the government will cheat, manipulate, manage, yes. and fix the election outcome. Uh, they will never give him power, and, and they will never transfer power. They won't transfer power because of, they have control of economic power as well as political yeah, power. Sure. They won't give in easily. And there's, there's lack of trust in the government is, of course, affecting the whole you know, the election tomorrow is going to affect the election tomorrow I as well. So. I, but so. I, don't, I don't think the government is going to cheat tomorrow. They would be very foolish to do that. If they want to remain in power, there are much more clever ways to do that than to try to rig the election. They can do something later, something to undermine the, new, the, the ability of the new government to run the country or something like that, which will be constitutional and nobody can really complain about it. Well, since the opening, you have also mentioned that since the opening in 2012, um, Burma or Myanmar is well connected, yes. recognized by the West and uh, Western governments. Uh, once they impose a sanction, uh, they slowly and uh, gradually lifted uh, those economic sanctions, particularly in EU countries. But those uh, international Western observers are also now here and uh, going to watch and uh, more monitor the election. And uh, if the election result is going to be fixed. Mm -hmm. Or if election result is not going to honor, there will be very, very, there were very negative relations, relation with the West, particularly with the U.S. Because of the, recently there was a uh, the the assistant to Obama, President Obama came here and uh, said that clearly said that uh, there will be consequences yeah. if if election is not going to do well. Yeah. And therefore, I don't think we have much that much to fear tomorrow. I think it will be a very peaceful event. The election will be free and fair. They will try to count the, count the votes for, as fairly as possible and according to the ability and the technology they got at their disposal. So I don't think we have to worry about that at all. The question is what's going to happen later. And that is too early to predict. And I'm certain that the military has been the power of this country since 1962 in different guises. They're not going to give up power that easily. No. They will try to cling on to power in one way or another. And probably they will find a much more clever way than in the past, you know, staging coups and arresting people. Right. It's not going to work. Right. It's just going to cause international condemnation. That's right. And uh, to rig an election, no, they, they won't work. So they would probably do something else. Because we have to remember that uh, the military didn't open up the country. They didn't introduce all these reforms because they wanted to give up power. They did all this because they wanted to remain in power. And they but, want to have a legitimacy. Yes, and uh, get the legitimacy, legitimacy and international recognition. They achieved that. Yes. And they were probably wanted to, to remain in their position as, you know, as long as they possibly can. Well, Berto, you also cover a lot, of, a lot on ethnic politics in this, this country. What is your reading on ethnic parties, especially in uh, Shan states as well as in, uh, in uh, Karen, Mon, yes. and uh, Arakan states? I think you can look at it in two ways. On the one hand, there isn't much support for NLD in those states. In Kachin state, Chan state, Akai state, no, not really. But on the other, so they, they're more likely to vote for regional local parties. But on the other hand, the argument against that is that many Shans or Kachins and others believe that they will get a better deal under an NLD government, or a government run by the NLD, than under the present government. So therefore, they may even vote for NLD, even in those areas. Not because they support those parties, but because they think that, yes, we can make a deal with the new government if we are sure that they win. But if the UCP stays on, there will be no deal. Thank you very much, Beto. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.